Uh, so our project was uh, analyzing tumor gene expression data with deep learning. Uh, um, I'm watching you come down here. So uh, to start off with a little background, uh, gene expression analysis is a powerful tool which has been enabled by rapid advances in RNA seq technology within the last decade or so. And in particular, we are interested in gene expression analysis because it can be used to identify candidate bar candidate biomarkers for disease. Currently, most differential expression analysis tools rely on a statistical method. Um, the popular tools such as DEP and HR use uh, negative binomial distributions to uh, predict differential, uh, differential genes. So uh, we wanted to try to develop a tool for differential gene expression analysis that was based on deep learning and benchmark it against the current tools. So our uh, major aim were to first develop a classifier that could classify normal and cancerous tissue, then use guided back propagation to identify the top genes that contribute to that classification. Then lastly, to uh, test the results, we wanted to compare it to uh, the top genes, uh, top differentially expressed genes identified by DEC and then validate those results from our back propagation and DEP using uh, gene oncology analysis. So uh, this is our general, pi general pipeline. So to start off, we got data from uh, GTEx and TEGA. Uh, GTEx for our normal cancer tissue, oh, sorry, normal tissue and TCGA for our cancer tissue. And uh, UCSD Athena to basically pipeline that data uh, we use PyTorch to develop our models for our classification and back propagation. And then DEC does our benchmark for a statistical uh, differential expression analysis tool, and David as a, a pathway analysis tool. So to start off, uh, we decided to uh, focus on lung tissue. So uh, we got the data from GTEx and TCGA um, for pre processing. Uh, for this is like uh, in order to like pass our data into our classifier. First, we organize the genes such that those from the same chromosome were near each other. Then uh, we filtered out genes with variants across samples less than 1.5 uh, because we had like such a large amount of genes and like we were limited in terms of like computational power and time. Uh, we decided to limit the genes that we looked at initially. Um, and then uh, we reshaped the array of gene expression values into uh, 105 by 105 uh, pixel. So basically, if you can think like originally you have like a whole set of um, gene expression values. So with each sample across the gene, you have a specific value. Then we just reshaped it into a square so that we could use it to train our uh, network. And uh, those values were normalized between zero and one. Uh, so our final data, we have 300 normal samples and 1,000 cancer samples. Uh, so this is kind of just like a basic breakdown of what our uh, classifier looks like. Um, and we decided to keep it small uh, to like lessen the computational strain and also because our final data actually ended up being kind of small. Um, and then we, once we trained the classifier, we used, it, we used a guided back propagation to identify the top contributing genes. So just to give a general idea of what that means, um, basically once we have the classification and like the weights that uh, resulted from the training of the models, guided back propagation says like, we want to like walk back through the weights that we found and see which inputs require like the smallest amount of change to result in a different classification. And that's how we're deciding, which are basically the top biggest contributors to the classification of something as cancerous or non cancerous. Yeah, so as far as our results, we were initially a little concerned because of sort of disparate uh, percentages of normal versus cancerous data, but our classifier actually had 99% accuracy on the test data set. So the classifier cancerous data is accurate for 100% of the time and had 97% accuracy to normal tissue. So we were sort of pleased with this. And then now here you can see the results of applying guided back propagation um, on some of these images. So the top, like grayish, are the guided back propagation images, and the bottom are the input data. So if you look at the top three, you can sort of see a pattern. Um, I don't know if I can 
you can kind of see like a certain pattern across all the input images um, in the guided back propagation that I'm mousing over right now that you couldn't see in the original input data. Um, and so that does lend, I guess, some visual credence to the fact that you know guided back propagation is detecting uh, certain patterns across the image. Um, and so what we then did is that we averaged all of the images together, the guided back propagation images together across all samples. And so we just sort of took the pixels with the smallest, that with like the widest pixels, which correspond to like the best, um, the most correlated with the output. And so the, this gave us the top like uh, differentially expressed genes that we were able to rank. And so we also did the same thing with DEP. So now when we compare the results um, that we get for a top differentially expressed genes with guided back propagation and DEP, um, we see that it, it's not super similar. So like within the top like 2,000 genes, like I don't know, approximately like 20% of the top 2,000 genes are similar. Um, so th these two are giving sort of different-ish uh, results. Um, and so then now we uh, put the top different, the top genes that we got from DEC and guide back propagation uh, through like gene ontology software to analyze sort of the pathways that resulted. And so what happened now is that, so we, the software uses bacon. And so the strange thing is that when we put it into um, David, the disease propagate was like, so we're dealing with lung cancer tissue and like this is not exactly related to lung cancer. So we're not exactly sure why this occurred, whether genome or softwares in general have a hard time finding this piece of or whether this is just an artifact or something that's wrong. We're, we're not really sure why this occurred. Um, and then the pathways that occurred, uh, so DEP gave one pathway and the guided back propagation gave approximately six pathways. And so the one pathway that DEP gave also showed up in guided back, back, back propagation. And there's evidence in the literature to suggest that a neuro ligand receptor interaction is important um, for lung cancer. And now for guided back propagation, it gave approximately six pathways, um, four new pathways, sorry, five new pathways, and four of those we found support in the literature for being related to lung cancer, and one of them, prostate cancer, um, is not related to lung cancer at all. So uh, that's sort of a false positive. Um, and so for future work, what we'd like to do is we'd like to take different geontology cultures to see if hopefully they classify the disease correctly. Um, we'd like to test different types of cancer, not just lung. Um, and we'd also like to try like different splits for our graph cam analysis, like for example, just averaging on cancer tissue to see if there are different biomarkers there. But I think overall we found that uh, uh, guided back propagation does elucidate, you know, more pathways, but literature shows to be relevant, but also does to give some small cell parts. Um, yeah. Okay, I never use the black question slides for the questions. I'd rather just see anything for that. Okay. Um, so, um, all right. So, uh, my cur my, I, have, I have a few questions basically in, in your sort of black and white plot. Um, it's hard to know what the axes are. So, what are we looking at? So the axes are just uh, the images in the one of the one of the the axes are meaningless images. What are the images? Uh, the images, these are, oh sorry, this is the gene expression uh, data. So originally it was just like uh, it's a single every gene in the dog? Yeah. Yeah. So basically like it would be like a gene and then like a sample and then like you have like, the array. Array. you have like the gene and then like the sample and you'd have like a whole array with like one gene and like all the samples. With the gene expression value, so we could uh, reshape that into like basically a square bit. So like yeah, we sure, could have an sure. image that's easier to plot. So you probably don't need all these axes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but basically, every gene is a dog, and the intensity, the higher the white, the more variation it has, or the more what? The more, uh, it's more strongly correlated to that classification. Yeah. What if you were to sort all the pixels based on that? Uh, if you sort it all the pixels mm -hmm. based on the intensity of uh, Yeah, but that's what we did. Okay, but 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 you're it looks like noise, but if you were to sort them mm -hmm. by line based on the white and then sort of show that across oh, the different oh, then you can kind of see which genes are ranked highly in one compared to the other. 
you can kind of see these intensities. In the next block, um, is this what I would expect by chance? If I take a random, you know, um, ranking, and then I increase the number of genes considered, and that increases the fraction almost linearly. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a random relationship, right? So basically, DEC and GB appear to basically be completely non related to each other, right? Uh, yeah, so that was like, okay, just checking. Yeah, we want to look at the same yeah. because But you can basically you'll look at a scatter plot as well, right? Yeah. In one versus right the other, and then see if it's just noise. Yeah, because it seems in the pathway analysis that there was some correlation between like, the identified genes and like, what we were looking for as biomarkers. But somehow between the results we got from the EDs and the bad yeah. population, there seemed to be like very low correlation. I would also try it even now to a bunch of different cancer types because it could be that just one cancer is weird. But if you just look at all kinds of other cancers, you should find something. If you don't, that says a lot about your method. Don't only with lung, you might say something about lung. You know what I mean? So basically, just to know, you know, hey, nothing makes sense in this one. Let's try a bunch of other ones to see if there's something wrong with the method. Mm -hmm. Other, <coughs> yeah. How did you decide on like the one of five by one of five? So just do you have one of five squared? Oh, we wanted a square number to apply since there's a bunch of square number that was like, does, we have like 10,831 genes. So it does not like require a statistics in the machine that would be like here. And because you said you ordered them according to the location. Yeah. So, like, but if you like wrap around these genes that are super far away from each other, they're going to be like close to each other in that square space. Yeah. Oh. I guess, yeah. Uh, we're assuming, like, I guess, so, so given that the width is one of five. I think like the number of genes per chromosome is like more than one of five, so that generally hopefully it wouldn't happen between two, but that definitely is like an issue of like, like one bordering chromosome. Um, um, I have used the same process that you guys used with the extracting of the cancer and cancer cells, and it's only supposed to affect this in RNA process. Oh, um, sorry. So I didn't really go into detail before, but um, UCSC Udina has this uh, toil recompute hub, which basically took the data from GTEC and TCGA and basically aligned it, normalized it, and like put it in one nice data set. Yeah, so that was yeah, that was like one of our concerns initially, but like it was all nicely put together. So the active sequence kind of high, so you have to what do you you mean like you mean like for example it's always classifying cancer yeah. or so on the test data set yeah like your accuracy is like surprisingly high the thing is that it's high also across tissue types too so it's not just like it does all cancer and fails on normal it has 100 percent on cancer and 97 percent accuracy on normal um so i guess the fact that it's out there as well made us confused so i don't have that question do you have like evidence of like stuff that it's like that can explain this really like accuracy? Um, I think as far as investigating like how the neural network is doing it, the farthest we got was like this. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely something to look into to try to get into it, making it more Okay. Um, great. Thanks again. Uh, you guys must be exhausted. I certainly am. I'm just thinking uh, like a three minute break. I think we're uh, way late, but at least, you know, clear your mind, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, we'll reconvene in uh, three minutes.